In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to perform joins in the Azure Data Factory data flow preview. So let's start by creating a new data flow. We'll start from a brand new canvas. I'm going to say uh, plus new data flow here on the uh, Resource Explorer and Data Factory. And uh, what I'll do is I'm going to combine data from two different movies rating files that I have. These movies uh, files come with the sample data on the uh, documentation sites for ADF data flow. Okay, let's call the first one movies one. Oops. And I have a uh, CSV file with movies ratings data here in my blob storage. And it's this one right here. I'm not going to use schema drift because I'm just going to work with the existing uh, schema. If you uh, want to, if you're going to have files that have changing um, columns and uh, sometimes columns added, deleted, changed, you want to use schema drift, but we're not doing that for this simple demo. Let's bring in the metadata. So I'm going to go to define schema and I've got movie ID, which I happen to know is the number. So I'm going to change that to integer. Title and genre, that looks fine. Let's add a second source. We'll take some uh, slightly different set of movie data, call this movies 2. This one I have here as movies DB data sets. You can combine you can combine unlike types. Your data sets can be different kinds of data sets if you like with joins, that's just fine. You can do a left and a right uh, with your joins in um, Data Factory. If you want to join additional sources, you just do a subsequent a join, add another join after that initial join in Dataflow. Let's bring in the metadata for the schema for this file. And uh, these are strings that you're it's an integer and the rating is an integer. Okay, very good, that should be fine. All right, so let's uh, do a join on this. So the way that you join these is very simple. We're gonna add a join transform after that source. When I do that, the join is attached from the left side to that uh, transform that I clicked on plus for the join transform. It will leave it named as join one and we set these to the right side. So the right side is going to be the second source, which is movies two. I'm going to do an inner join, which is the most common sort of join that is done in these sort of operations. And then I'm going to pick the key column that I want to join on. So I'm going to join on title. Okay, that's fine. And you can also optimize that join. This is not a necessary uh, step. This is optional. But if you are uh, loading up a star schema and you have situations where um, the lookup table or the reference or um, dimension table can fit into memory within a single worker node in the Spark cluster, you can say that you want to uh, leverage the ability to have a broadcast join on that. So you can click those. Now I'll try to push that data, um, replicate that data into memory on the node so that can make your uh, join much uh, quicker. As opposed to SSIS where everything has to be pre-sorted for a join, this is not a merge join specific implementation uh, within Spark. Uh, it's a slightly different implementation. Um, in this case, within Data Factory data flow. And then you can also uh, set partitioning for this as well. So if you have a, a good um, range or um, fields that you can hash on, you can select those and you can uh, write expressions for those as well so that you can hash that data across the different worker nodes and the different partitions within Spark. Okay, so we're just going to leave it as that for now. That's fine. You don't need to set this. This is just an optimization, but I wanted to show you that as well. Now from here, we could sync this data uh, directly into uh, your database or your folder, uh, sync. And so when I go into, I'm going to select a data set for this. I'm going to put this into a uh, folder. That one will be just fine. And when you do go to the mapping tab, we automatically set to auto map. So we'll just land and push all those fields into your target destination. Or um, you can say turn auto mapping off and you can manually manage the mapping. Now you see that there are some um, red exclamation marks against some of these columns, and that's because I joined the, the data together. So if you look at the metadata under inspect for the join, you see that on the output schema, I now have all the combined columns from the inner join. So you have to rectify that. Now you can do that here in the sync. You could just remove these right here with the garbage can. Another way to do that is to use the selectivity transform, what we call select. This transform can uh, allow you to select specific columns that you want to um, include or alias within your um, data flow. So in this case, you could just clean it up here and you can remove these right here. And now you have a perfectly validated um, data flow. And when you go into the sync, you're only going to see those columns that are now selected. So you can do that either way. Now, another thing I'm going to show you is you could also use select within a data flow where you want to do a self-join. 
Uh, so I'm going to take this select off here. One of the reasons, one of the use cases for using a self join within Dataflow is that you're doing aggregations. Aggregations are very common within um, data transformation and Dataflow. And what happens when you perform an aggregate? Let's do a very simple aggregate here just to kind of show you. So let's, oh, sorry, let's group by uh, genre. And how about we do an aggregation of, just to be very simple here. Let's aggregate, do, let's do the average rating. So we're in, in the aggregate uh, functions here. So let's do an average. So this will give us the average across the genres. So we can call this a genre average as our aggregate. Now, what's going to happen is on the metadata, you'll see that the incoming is all the columns that we have combined between the two sources. When we output and we perform this kind of an aggregation, what happens is the output coming out is only going to be your um, group by clause and then the aggregation that you're performing. So we need to have um, a key coming through as well so we can self-join this back together at the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my aggregate and let me add in another aggregation here, just kind of an aggregation so I can have my key back. Um, so let's pick from this list, let's do the movie ID, which I know is a number. And here in the expressions, I can just do a very uh, simple uh, max on that. So just do the max of the uh, movie ID. There we go. And we're validated and we can save it. And there we go. Now what we can do is we can join that back together. The way we do that, the way to get that original data back is to branch. So there's this new branch operation here on the transformations. Now what this is going to do is this is going to give me an exact copy or duplicate of that data. And you see the name is the same, so you have to alias that. So we add a select directly after that. And we can alias the entire stream. Select will do more than just column selectivity and column aliasing. It will also allow you to alias the entire stream. So I'm going to call this original ridge data. And we'll just um, select all. We'll keep all the, row, all the columns there. Now what I can do is I can join the, all that back together. So I'll put a join right after my aggregate. And so my left side is my aggregate, and then my right side can be that original set of data. So what's going to happen now is I can join on that movie ID that I created. And then when I go into the metadata, now I've got all my columns back. So I'm good to go. So now when I go into my sync, You'll see again, I have all of my columns and I have my duplicate so I can um, rectify those here or I could add another select on here and I can do my column selectivity right there. So that's a quick simple look at uh, joining within Azure Data Factory Dataflow. Thank you.